Hello everyone! Welcome to Pike and Shot Campaigns. I believe this is based on... It's really loud, let me turn that down. It's on my damn volume switch there. <laughs> I believe this is based on the Field of Glory tabletop rules. Uh, my experience with those rules is somewhat limited. I've played it a couple of times, but honestly I found it a little bit too fiddly for my tastes. Uh, but presumably with the computer making all the calculations will be much easier. So, alright, let's see. I haven't played this before, this is the first time I've run this game, so I don't really know what to expect. Escape any time, for options, I recommend you play a tutorial. Well, that's probably a good idea. So, historical. Loading. Tutorial! Very good! So, we've got the Thirty Years' War, English Civil War, Italian Wars, and Tercio to Solo. That's. Yeah, Pike and Shotty. Um, Alright, tutorial scenarios for how to play. First scenario explains the basic function of the game, as we'll illustrate some of the interactions between common trip types. Okay. Free missions to download. Cool. Or if there are new missions, but they're not free. I appear to be getting two frames per second right now. Now I'm at zero. <laughs> Here we go, that's a bit better. Uh, somewhere in Germany, 1640, a religious war between Catholics and Protestants has already been going on for 22 years since the Protestant Bohemian nobility rejected the election of the militantly Catholic Ferdinand of Austria as Crown Prince of Bohemia and threw his representatives out of an upstairs window. That's a very long sentence. Uh, is that the origin of the word defenestrating? I don't know. Anyway, over the intervening years, war has been continuous with foreign intervention by Danes, Swedes, Spanish and French and the turmoil. Much of Germany has been devastated by the depredations of the warring armies. This scenario will show you the basic functions of the game, select units to see what their abilities are, move your troops to shoot at or charge the enemy. Okie dokie. Control left click. Okay, this is neat. Each pre-built things keep popping up. Each pre-built scenario has a brief map like this one, where we give information about the technical situation. Fortunately, in this first encounter, our forces are more numerous than those of the enemy and of superior quality. This is just as well, as it is rumoured that our Lord General is a favourite of the King and has never set foot on a battlefield before. We have a balanced force of horse and foot and a battery of artillery. Provided that our Lord General does not issue any bizarre orders, victory should be assured. Well, if I'm supposed to represent the Lord General, I think bizarre orders will be the, if you'll pardon the expression, order of the day. The next screen, force selection screen, details the forces available to us. In this scenario, we have no choice of which forces to bring, but in some scenarios, a proportion of the units are optional and can be selected from those available using points. The points available will vary according to the difficulty setting you have set. Uh, pike and shot. This battalion is a mixed unit, currently one third pike and two those musketeers. Such units are the backbone of the army. They are able to put out significant firepower, but so long as they remain steady, can defend themselves well against the frontal cavalry. Ground. Did they say this was six? What year did they say it was? I can't remember. Um, thinking about the sort of progression of the piking shot units. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They're, where did I get up to? They are not permitted to charge non light mounted troops. There must. No, I'm already forgetting these things as I read them. Their muskets can shoot at enemy up to four squares away, but are more effective against targets within two squares. The battalion can shoot at full effect against targets within 22 degrees and straight ahead, and at half effect against targets within 22 and 45 degrees and straight ahead. Mixed foot, average quality, musket 66 by 34. Uh, close combat rating, shooting attack rating, armor rating. That's fair enough. Left click to add a unit, right click to remove a unit. Oh. The map it, and it zooms as well. Ah, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. We've got all sorts of things here. Commanded shot, just uh, detached musketeers, I believe. Artillery and horse and a blank thing that 
I don't know, it looks like it's meant to be a text box or something, but uh, So I guess we got three pike and shot, one medium guns, one commander shot, one horse, and three veteran horse. Fair enough, let's continue. Object. Route the enemy army by routing 60% of their troops. At the start of the Swedish turn one, no one's routed. Welcome to the Pike and Shot tutorial. You are in command of a Protestant German army in the later Thirty Years' War. But I'm the Swedish, aren't I? Whatever. Uh, and we'll be fighting a small battle against a Catholic German Imperial army. You can move around the battlefield by moving the mouse, push the mouse to the edge of the screen to move the map, roll back the mouse wheel to zoom out. I don't suppose there's any... Um, rotate the map, is there? Uh, take some time to move around the battlefield, select your own units or mouse over enemy units for further information about their capabilities. Click on the end turn button at the bottom of the screen. When you have completed all the actions you want to make this turn, the enemy will then have their turn. The battle will continue until one army breaks and flees. 60% casualties. Click on the tick or spacebar when you have read each message. You see? Swedish. Or German. When you mouse over a unit, information about it will appear at the bottom right of the screen. Three numbers representing close combat, shooting, and armor. Is there only a general guide to the power of the unit? Getting the right matchups is more important than having the more powerful unit. In order to issue orders, you must first select the unit you wish to command by left clicking on it. Deselect by left clicking on another unit or an empty square or in the spacebar to issue orders. Right click on the order icon. When you select a unit, information about that unit appears in the same way at the bottom left of the screen. It's kind of the bottom right at the moment, but uh, you can get more detailed information about a unit by holding the control button down and left clicking on the unit. So, there's a veteran horse, a squadron of armoured horse with pistols, are trained to charge at the trot to fire their pistols at point blank range. It's effective against enemy horse, who are trying to shoot distance but leaves them no relation to steady pike and shot, so they can get behind their flank. This is a veteran, superior fighting quality. Move between the highlighted squares, mouse over anyone, and then right click. Alright, so we can right click anywhere here. We. So, this squadron of enemy horses armoured and trained to charge contact like ours. However, unlike our veterans, though fully trained, it lacks the confidence. If it's on a hill, while it's on a hill, it will have close combat advantage against enemy, enemy on lower ground. If the height difference is 75 or less, the advantage will only be slight, but if it's more than 75, it will be substantial. 75 what? Exactly. Um, probably doesn't matter. Just 75 general units. Okay. So we can uh, not open disorders mountain foot water. I'm guessing you can't go in water. Um, open ground hill. Ah, there we go. Height 100. Okay. Height 200. So yeah, fair enough. That's where that 75 thing. Comes. Raw Pike and Shot, this interview telling you our own Pike and Shot, which is newly raised and lacks experience and enthusiasm. So, down the right here, Raw Pike and Shot appear to be not very good. Raw 550, I don't know, maybe that's it. Raw 515, that's probably the number of men, that's my guess. But there doesn't appear to be any sort of rotate. Every time I move the mouse, it <laughs> goes over a unit. Uh, Aquabus is horse with carbines. Soften up any on foot. Okay. Is that everyone? Can I. What are these question marks? Now, as I select, they're on the left. That's fine. Pike and shot, blah blah blah, that's the stuff we read before. Um, and these are raw pike and shot, these are regular pike and shot, those. That's as far as I can zoom in. Those pike look really odd, they look like one big solid block. Um, how far can you guys shoot? This unit has potential shooting targets. They'll be marked by the Arc of Fire icon. Ah, yes, okay, so... That's half Arc of Fire, casualties up to 12. They're on a hill. Casualties up to 
casualties in under 29. They are... I'm not sure if they, these ones here have already taken damage or something. And I'm not sure what these question marks are supposed to be. Are they objectives or potentially someone's hidden in there? I'm not sure. Let's try and shoot uh, the one who's already slightly damaged. 23. And now they're 214 out of 237. So yes, that must be the men. And I believe that reduces their uh, melee effectiveness as well. So that's cool. Um, can I... No, I'm just trying to see if we can tell how far they can move, but it doesn't appear you can. Alright. Alright, so we'll move our veteran horse up slightly. Our regular horse up. Behind them. Uh, hang on, oops, control. Yes. Control and left click. So they're trained to charge at the trot. Pistol impact, pistol melee, average quality. They are steady. I'm not sure what control status is. No shooting. Pistol impact plus 100. I think that's... is it points of advantage? I think that's the... I can't remember exactly. It's been many years since I actually played Field of Glory. Uh, but they do get plus 100 against any mounted except impact mounted. Now, can we tell if these guys are impact mounted? Is that... How do I get rid of... The, no, can I hold control? Yes, they are pistol impact, so I guess I don't get any points of advantage against them. Uh, we'll start moving some men up, actually. These are... We'll move them up in a single... Ooh, really? I didn't know you could do that. Cool. There you go, that's something I didn't know, but I do now. And what do we got here? These are commanded shot. They're light troops. Probably want to keep them in uh, difficult terrain, I'm guessing. We can shoot them. Let's shoot them. Oh, they were hidden. They're not anymore. And these are veteran horse. We can move them. See if we can get some sort of flanking thing going. Can I... Re... Um, spin... Ah, yes. I do. Not enough AP left to... Okay. But that's cool. That's cool. Now I know. Uh, I think that's everyone I've got. Now, how do I in turn? No, I didn't want that. How do I end my turn? Um, next unit, next unmoved. Ooh. Neat. Does that... Oh, yeah, okay. That's cool. Detail unit, unit list, casualties, toggle, top view. Aha! There's something different. I, I kind of like the isometric, to be honest. But I still can't figure out how to end my turn. Um, I don't want to retreat. Uh, no, how do I get back to the... Yeah, alright. What did that actually toggle? Oh, yeah, there we go. No, that's the one I already did, isn't it? That's not what I want to look at. Does it tell me how to end the, my turn? See you next time. Move to low detail. Ah, uh, space. No. Um. This is kind of embarrassing. I can't remember how to end my turn. I click on the arrow that says end turn. <laughs> All right, residual shooting phase. <laughs> Bizarre orders, did it say? All units 
with shooting capability can shoot in both their own turn and in response to enemy movement or shooting in the enemy turn. Any shots not used in inside turn are used in the residual shooting phase that follows the turn. The unit will shoot at its most obvious target. Cool. So if we did want to concentrate on that we would have had to specifically tell them because they'll it looks like they'll choose whoever's most directly in front of them. Units in close combat continue fighting to one side route to fall back. Continuing close combats are adjudicated in the melee phase. Also in this phase, routers and pursuers move and pursuers may charge fresh enemy in their path. Catholic turn. Charge. That's kind of why I wanted to turn around, but whatever. Charge in the flank has dropped one roll. Level is now disrupted. Ouchies. <laughs> Fragmented. That means its morale and cohesion are severely impaired and it is close to breaking. Your fight is severely reduced effect. The casualties are suffered will further reduce its fighting ability. There is a chance each turn that may rally to disrupted. Massively advantaged versus our veteran horse. Enemy unit one, well der. I can't seem to scroll the map at this point. During the enemy turn or zoom. So Decisive. Ah, they've turned around now. Okay. What I was really looking for was something to tell me. Some sort of, you know, projected outcome kind of thing. These are. See, if I do that, I could charge. The question is, do I want to? Um, not being particularly knowledgeable about Field of Glory. I guess this is where you go. Control, enter. They don't have shooting anyway. Not against foot. Uh, mounted troops in open terrain, plus 100 uh, medium foot. See, in the impact, they're probably not going to get any points of advantage because these are also impact. Hang on, it's plus 100 versus any mounted. So they would get a point of advantage there. They're good quality, so they get plus 50 point of advantage there. And in continuing melees, it looks like they would get an advantage against them because they're mounted. Well, let's charge. You'll use chance of success if you charge this enemy are indicated below. Ah, okay, so once I give the order. I can confirm or not. Win 31, draw 65, lose 3. So, and then melee around. So it seems likely that I'll do reasonably well. Given that, I can also do these. And yet, flanking and. Okay. But it looks like they'll probably win in the next melee round. So they couldn't move there and then charge, okay. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, then there, these guys. I think that's a half. Yeah. 14. Slightly more likely. I don't think you can shoot them, no. I don't think so. Oh, shoot. We did nothing. Alright, so what do we do about shooting here? Short range shoot, long range four. They're not armoured. Um we don't need to worry about. So let's sh shoot them. Can't shoot is it them or um Yes. Now shoot. That's better. Oh, you shoot back, do you? Cheeky buggers. But you can only do it once. They are... They don't appear to have actually had all that many casualties by the looks of things. They're steady. Um, could be worth me trying to charge them. Um, I don't think I can do anything with these guys, really. 
Maybe I can sneak around there while these guys are engaged. Get them in the flank. And they can't really do anything, I don't think. So, I guess that's everyone. I think my horses there are going to uh, die horribly. So they are disrupted. Its morale and cohesion are impaired. If it fights somewhat reduced effect, casualties are suffered will reduce further its fighting ability. There is a chance each turn it may rally. I think I read that before, didn't I? Our unit one. These casualties seem very slow. Um, they fragmented. Does that mean they're going to run away? I don't know. broken off. <laughs> it has just rallied to disrupted. Paired but not as badly as before. And they break. This means they are broken, the men are fleeing for their lives. I don't need friendly unit in an adjacent square. They also suffer from a real state drop. Victors will pursue. No walls can be issued until they cease pursuing. If the Rousers leave the battlefield, the pursuers may do so too. If they do, there's a chance on a subsequent turn that they will return. Pursuers may charge fresh enemy that they meet in the course of their pursuit. These pursuers are charging an enemy unit in the path of their pursuit. Why didn't they charge them as well? That's, I don't know. I'll probably get these guys in as well, though. Right. Um, that's as far out as I can zoom, apparently. So, these guys are probably going to come around and flank me, so, uh, can I get everyone in on them? It's, is it worth it? <laughs> this is the question. Uh, let's see. Anyway, let's move these guys here and charge them. Decisive. They can't be doing anything because they're pursuing, I believe it said. Alright. Let's try it. Hang on. Let's move them there first. I thought I was charging then, but... Nope, that's the shoot button. <laughs> and they're disrupted. That's a good start. Um, I should really concentrate on one unit at a time, truth be known. Uh, are they... Looks like they're kind of running. So I can't do much there. I guess. Oh, they're facing that way, okay. Are they? I can't really... Yes, if I zoom right in, it shows they're facing that way. There is a little indicator there, that when you zoomed out, you can't really see. Okay, I think that's everyone, is there? Oh, I've got my cannons. Better shoot. They... Now, they should be being light troops, not yeah, disorders others except light foot. So let's just uh, go and hide in the woods there. They can't do anything. Right, end turn. Probably should remember to zoom out as far as possible before ending the turn, since I can't seem to do anything in the enemy turn. So the enemy horse massive is advantaged. We won, of course. Yeah, 
Alright. The uh, turn sequence is confusing me a little. Now it's the Swedish turn. Alright, there. Stuck in. Are they. Are they still. They are routed. It appears that my guys have stopped routing. Okay. Uh, pursuing, rather. They. I, I'm not sure the chances of them rallying. Question becomes should I finish them off? Or should I swing around and... I don't know the uh, the dice rolls, so... You guys, if you move... Here, can you shoot them? Move. Turn to face them. And shoot them. <laughs> so these guys are all disrupted. Well, if they're disrupted, we probably should charge in. Their melee is down to 40 and 35. So let's charge. Yep, and you can charge. And they are fragmented. And you guys can't appear to turn around. Or at least you can't automatically move. Maybe turning around actually takes all their action. If they have 10 action points, does this tell me how many action points it's going to take to actually do these actions? Eight, apparently. And I don't know how many it takes them to move. Mm -hmm. It would probably be more useful if it actually told me these things. Not enough AP. Apparently they have no AP. I haven't done anything with them this turn, but okay. Who's left? You guys. Um, I don't think it would be a good idea to charge them, but there's really nothing I can do. <laughs> they're either going to cop the charge or they're going to... Yeah, either way. Severely disorders mounted. Um, I don't know if they can still come in from behind and attack me if I'm in there, so can I run away through the through the woods? Let's find out. Right. They can't do anything, so whatever. They must be just completely immobile guns. As I've said, I'm not familiar with the uh, Field of Glory rules, so that's possible. No limbers for them. Um, so they've broken. Oh, oh damn, my cavalry ran off the table. <laughs> I don't know if they mean they come back or not. Um, but we've routed 60% of them, so it doesn't matter. Shouldn't I win? <laughs> Fragmented. The enemy has lost heart, you are victorious. We can claim this as a glorious victory. Okay, so it does have, you know, number of men, which is pretty cool. Captured and deserted. <laughs> Neat. Neat. Uh, okay, well that's probably going to do it. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me check community scenarios. Does this have any multiplayer is what I want to know. Um, it doesn't look like it does, to be honest. Uh, yes, here you go, multiplayer. Welcome to multiplayer. So, server. 
Uh, the main question is can I choose to play a specific person? Okay, I'm going to need to account, so I can't check all this because I don't believe I have a Slytherin account right now. Oh, scenario issues. That's neat. Single player randoms, single player campaigns. That's quite awesome. Uh, yeah, that's all. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess the question then is, yeah, I, it would appear that I can uh, either pick a random person to fight in multiplayer, or you know, if there's uh, someone I specifically want to play, is that that would be the main thing. Uh, my regular club fellows. Uh, conclusions of this game. I think I like it. Uh, Field of Glory. As I mentioned earlier, it's a bit fiddly for my tastes. Um, I think I would do a lot better in this game if I was more familiar with the rules, though. Um, this tutorial, I'd have to keep going through the rest of them to see, but it doesn't really... That first tutorial, at least, doesn't really sort of tell me the... How can I put it? The sort of mechanics, the, you know, is it a good idea to do this? Um, you know, the action points thing, I had to work that out on my own, I couldn't sort of, you know, can my units move here and still do this? No, they don't have enough action points to do this, and that was kind of what got my cavalry up on the left flank there killed, because I didn't realise that I couldn't move that far and then turn around, and then they got flanked and whooped. Um, but beyond that, I think once you get to know the game properly and you can sort of play the system it would probably work out much better. I think I will probably enjoy this to a certain point. Um, I don't think it's going to be in my favourite games of all time, but uh, nonetheless I probably won't record anymore, at least not until I know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's my first look at this game. I think it has potential. I don't know that it'll replace the tabletop version entirely, but any more than any other sort of computer adaptation of a war game would. Because there's definitely the social interaction of war gaming. I won't uh, mention the stereotypes of stinky, unwashed war gamers, because that would be rude. Uh, anyway, yeah, I think this game is pretty good overall. So, uh, draw your own conclusions, I guess. Um, but thank you very much for watching. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.